Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, elusive LAX, Jetpack Man identified. Also, SAFE says CFI ACS work restarts, and FAA proposes medical requirements for balloons. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. The mystery is finally solved. For the past two years, people and pilots in Los Angeles have reported seeing an identified person flying vertically in the air, thousands of feet in the air, armed with only his clothes and a small pouch on his back. Observers initially assumed it was a rare homemade thruster equipped backpack, leading to theories as to what kind of backyard inventor became the Jetpack Man. A small number of various man portable thruster systems have been made, but most carry prohibitive fuel requirements to keep the pilot up for more than a few minutes. Even the most cutting edge equipment has a max safe ceiling in the range of 1500 feet. If return fuel is accounted for. The most recent sighting occurred last July when one American Airlines pilot reported seeing the mystery man as they approached LAX. Pictures have surfaced taken around the time of the 2020 sightings, showing an inflatable character from the 1993 movie The Nightmare Before Christmas airborne against a backdrop of Los Angeles. The photograph was taken by a sheriff helicopter patrolling the area, and an untethered inflatable would fit the altitude requirements and lack of ground witnesses in the case. After the break, the next Waco Kitchen coming to Lakeland Airport. Those delicious details after these messages. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some shorter stories in this next segment we call Around the Patch. So let's go ahead and start with the next Waco Kitchen coming to Lakeland. Florida's Lakeland Airport, home to Sun and Fun, is getting the newest eatery once final approval for the lease is given. The city unanimously approved the agreement for Dymore Eats LLC to create a restaurant at the airport. Dymore is the newest creation of Waco Aircraft Group owner Sven Lepsky also the owner of the Waco Kitchen restaurant. Operating an eatery and biplane manufacturer under the Waco brand has made their food a special treat for aviation enthusiasts. Skywatch launches one-day renter's insurance. Aviation insurance company Skywatch has launched their new usage-based insurance product for rented light aircraft with insured duration of yearly, monthly, weekly, and even daily coverage. Offered with Global Aerospace, another insurance and risk management company, Skywatch will offer insurance directly to pilots via select partners, while Global provides their underwriting and claims handling. The service is expected to offer the coverage for as little as $5 a day, with coverage available in less than 90 seconds. Rostec releases training parachute. Rostec's new parachute, the Cadet 75, is a round canopy training system to allow each step of the deployment process to be manually actuated. With demarcation between phases of deployment, students can attentively practice separation from the aircraft and freefall skills. The chute is suited for drops from 43 knots to 151 knots, with a total flying weight up to 240 pounds. Increased canopy stability allows the parachutist to make a full turn in no more than 12 seconds. 
The upcoming Crew-3 launch has been postponed once again. With NASA citing a minor medical issue with an unspecified astronaut, the flight was to take place aboard SpaceX Crew Dragon launched from their Falcon 9 rocket on October 31st, when it was postponed citing a large storm system. The issue now, NASA affirmed in a statement, it is not related to COVID-19, nor any serious medical problem that would preclude the launch in the near future. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, as we turn to the rest of the news, the FAA has updated the ACS Working Group with the agency's plan to publish future updates. The Private Pilot and Commercial Pilot Airman Certification Standards were completed years ago, but up to now, no further developments have occurred due to disputes in the publication process. The Society of Aviation and Flight Educators announced in their November membership newsletter that the wait may be finally over. In the spring of 2021, SAFE signed an industry letter to the Department of Transportation requesting the continuation of the updated standards, hoping to spur a continuation of the working group's process. A legal debate has stalled the project as the DOT concluded that the ACS and PTS required legal rulemaking because it used mandatory language when assigning tasks to refer to maneuvers or skills not mentioned explicitly in the CFRs. Following that decision in December 2018, the DOT advised the FAA that all future ACS documents, including updates, would require that the FAA choose between removing any tasks not explicitly required by regulators or two through the process to make a rule that would make them regulatory. The former would invalidate much if the ACS project's purpose, while the latter would subject its development to lengthy bureaucracy. After these messages, FAA proposes medical requirements for balloons. Those details after the break. The Zephyr is what you have always wanted. A highly capable two-seat turbine-powered helicopter with great ramp appeal, 100 mile per hour cruise speed, 172 nautical mile range, and to top it all off, a first of its kind emergency airframe parachute system, the Curdy Design Zephyr, unique advanced, innovative, and highly capable. Your ultimate freedom machine is available now at Zephyr.eu. Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. The FAA has proposed a rule requiring commercial hot air balloon pilots to hold a medical certificate when operating for hire. Similar to other commercial pilots, they would need a second-class medical certificate. Under current regulations, lighter-than-air aircraft pilots do not require the same medical certification process that others do, only required to affirm that they have no medical defect that would make them unable to pilot a free balloon. Balloon pilots are responsible for the safety of their passengers, FAA Administrator Steve Dixon said. This proposed rule would ensure that balloon pilots meet the same medical requirements as pilots of other commercial aircraft. This falls in line with agency actions to increase the margin of safety across the general aviation sphere. As announced following a 2016 fatal balloon accident that caused 16 fatalities, the FAA developed an accreditation program working with the Balloon Federation of America, the Envelope of Safety. The BFA program helps prospective customers select a ride company or pilot that has been proven to voluntarily maintain higher safety standards. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. 
and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.